In 1971, an American airline plane just took off, and after only a few minutes, the passenger sitting on the last seat called the air hostess, and handed her a letter with a smile. There was only few words written in the letter, which made the whole America shocked. Who was that passenger? And why FBI did not found him dead or alive till now? Finding him is way far task, even America's most powerful agency was unable to find even a single information of that man. Welcome back again to the Y Studios. Viewers, this mysterious incident was started from Portland Airport on 24th of November 1971. A person who looked like a businessman booked a ticket from Portland to Seattle, and instantly started moving towards the plane. At that time, there was no strictness in domestic flights, neither the luggage of the passengers was checked, nor any identity verification was done. It was the plane of Northwest Orient Airlines, Boeing 727, which was expected to take off from Portland and land in Seattle in just 45 minutes. Wearing a sunglasses and with a briefcase, this passenger named Dan Cooper got in the plane and seated himself on his favorite seat. Which was the last seat of the plane, he ordered himself a drink and with it he lighted a cigarette too. Till now it was all normal because in 70s smoking was allowed in the planes. On exact 2.58 pm flight took off. Just after the takeoff, Dan Cooper turned back with a smile and gave an envelope to the air hostess. Air hostess whose name was Florence Schaffner, when she read the letter. She left stunned and still. Miss, I have a bomb here and I would like you to sit by me. When Florence Schaffner seated near him, he opened his briefcase in which eight dynamite sticks and a detonator were present. In short, the plane was hijacked. Dan Cooper had three demands. He wanted $200,000 cash before 5 p.m., two parachute pairs, and a refueling truck should be present on Seattle Airport. He also warned Florence Schaffner, in case of any mistake he will explode the bomb. With Dan Cooper there were 35 other passengers also present. And they were totally unaware of what was happening in the back of the plane. Florence Schaffner went into the cockpit with the demands of Dan Cooper, and explained all the story. Another air hostess whose name was Tina Mucklow. Now she seated herself besides Dan Cooper, with the intercom. She was working as a communicator between pilot and Dan Cooper. Having in mind, that it was the first plane hijack in America's history. Which was done for the ransom. That's why local authority and FBI decided to fulfill all the demands of hijacker. They were sure that Dan Cooper will not run far from them. Flight which was expected to land in Seattle within 45 minutes of its takeoff, was now orbiting the Seattle airport for the next one hour and 30 minutes. And 35 passengers which were present on the plane were told that, due to some technical difficulties, we are not landing. During this time, from Seattle Bank, 10,000 currency notes of $20 were collected, and their serial number were noted, and two parachutes were also arranged from the nearby Sky Diving Club. On exact 5.45 p.m. the plane was landed. And according to the promise, a bag full of money, parachute pair were handed to Dan Cooper, and the last demand, the plane was also refueled. After his demands fulfilled, Dan Cooper asked 35 passengers and two crew members to get off the plane, while pilots and other two crew members were asked to stay. Now it was night, and the plane once again took off. He sent some important instructions to the pilot through Tina Muckler who was sitting beside him. He wanted that the plane's landing gear and flaps should be open, altitude should be 10,000 feet, speed should be 320 km per hour, and plane should be headed directly towards Mexico City. Pilot fulfilled all the other demands of Dan Cooper, but taking the plane directly to the Mexico City was not possible due to fuel. So he proposed two options for refueling. Reno or Phoenix. Dan Cooper got agreed on Reno. On the other hand local and federal authorities were also doing their work, two fighter jets were headed towards the plane, but they were unable to maintain this slow speed, so they started orbiting the plane. In the dark night, plane was continuously heading towards Reno, in this instance, Dan Cooper ordered Tina Mucklow to go into the cockpit, where two pilots and one flight attendant was present. When Tina Mucklow turned to close the cockpit's door, the last scene which she saw was that, Dan Cooper was tying something on his back. After this, Plane staircase got opened and Dan Cooper jumped from the there. After this, whatever happened has been discussed from the last 50 years till now. After three hours when the plane landed in Reno, it was searched completely, there was neither Cooper present, nor any bomb. After this incident, Dan Cooper was found neither in the plane nor anywhere else dead or alive, who was Dan Cooper actually? And where did he vanish after manipulating the whole America? This case is the single FBI case which is not closed yet after 50 years. 
No one saw Dan Cooper jumping from the plane, due to the open staircase, it was confirmed that he jumped somewhere between Seattle and Reno. FBI started their investigation, but unfortunately they only found Cooper's tie, eight cigarette filters and a parachute which he left in the plane. Even no one had his single photo. After interviewing cabin crew, a sketch was made. Before searching Cooper between Seattle and Reno, FBI wanted to know where he actually jumped. Knowing this was not as difficult because the plane was on autopilot, means path on which plane was flying was already recorded. Plane speed and altitude was known already, beside it, with the help of flight recorder, it was known that the plane staircase was opened on 8.10 p.m. With all this information, Dan Cooper drop location was guessed, and a search area was defined. This 45 square kilometer area is full of forests and mountains. Aerial and land team searched every inch of this land, but neither Cooper nor any briefcase or money was found. This area was so cold, that everyone believed that Dan Cooper would have been dead. But what happened afterwards, was not in the mind of FBI. Now FBI started to take help from citizens. Dan Cooper's sketch and serial numbers of the currency notes were published in the newspaper. And a reward was also promised, if someone gives information about Cooper. The FBI thought, if Dan Cooper is alive, he will spend the currency notes somewhere. But surprisingly, currency note of these serial number was seen nowhere. This case was not closed yet, after nine years, in 1980, an incident happened in southern Washington, near Columbian River there is a beach which is known as Tina Bar. Here, a little boy with his parents was playing with the sand, where he found three bundles of currency notes. These were $20 bundles, which make a sum of $5,800. The parents took this money to the FBI, and shockingly, the serial numbers of these notes got matched with the serial numbers of the notes, which were given to the Dan Cooper. Instead of getting solved, this case got more tangled up. This money was found 27 kilometers away from the drop location of Cooper. Firstly it was thought, this money was dropped from the Cooper bag in Lewis River, and traveling through the water they came to the Columbian River. But after noticing that the Lewis River flows in the opposite direction, it was concluded, that these money bundles had not come here by flowing in the Lewis River. For FBI this whole case was far away from getting solved. Even after three years of this incident, on Tina Bar Beach, where this money was found, an excavation work was done, during excavation new sand was dumped on the beach, and this money was found in this newly dumped sand. With this new information, it looks like that, Dan Cooper, or someone close to him had buried this money after three years of the incident on Tina Bar Beach, to once again manipulate the FBI. In this case, FBI investigated persons which somehow resembles Cooper, but it was not fruitful. Some investigation officers says that Cooper was a trained military commando, because the parachute which he took with him was military parachute, and it was difficult to operate, in comparison to the one which he left on the plane. After $5,800 cash being found, the remaining 9,710 currency notes were never found. FBI did not have any clues about Cooper, they just have his sketch, his ticket, and a tie on which the clip can be seen on the left side, which means Cooper was left-handed. All the information which FBI has, is published on their website. And this case is still open today. Hope you like this episode and share it with others. Thank you very much for your loving comments. See you in the next awesome episode.